First of all, when most people think depression, they tie it in with sadness, anxiety, and any other words that are synonymous with that. But for the sake of this, I really want to break down. There's basically two different types of depression. Hey, this is Jason Roselle, and welcome to Get Inspired, the official podcast and YouTube show that will empower your mind, body, business, social media branding, relationships, and anything that's holding you back from becoming the best version of you. Listen, before I became a TV personality, an author, a celebrity trainer, a life and wellness coach, and the founder of Caliente Fitness, I was broke, obese for 20 plus years, full of stretch marks, full of excuses, and most importantly, here's the deal, I was unhappy. I was able to change my life completely, and since then, I've helped thousands do the same. This show is gonna bring you awesome guests tons of helpful programs that'll aid you, but most importantly, your questions and topics that will make this show your show. My question is this, are you ready to get inspired? Well, get ready, because the show starts now. Today, we're gonna be talking about mental health, one of my favorite subjects, and today we got one of my favorite guests, Kevin John, he's a sportscaster for ABC 10 Sacramento. He's going to share with us his story on depression, specific types of depression, how it took over his life, how you made it out through the other side in a bigger and better way. What's up, brother? What's up, Jason, man? I'm so glad to be here. So happy that you had me back on here, man. And I appreciate just the wonderful introduction. Hopefully I can live up to that. You are so welcome. So I want to tell the audiences, you're going to also give us some tips along the way, correct, on how to deal with certain things like this, right? Absolutely. I'm going to give you three main tips on if you are suffering from something like this, and we're going to get into depression, but if you're suffering for this, I'm going to give you three tips on not just how you can beat it, but how you can combat it and live a purpose-filled life and thrive. Absolutely. And I cannot wait to hear it. So why don't you talk to me and talk to everyone about depression? Because everybody has a generalized idea of like, you know, depression. I personally have suffered from depression a few times my whole life. You know, when I was, you know, a high school dropout, when I was being bullied a lot, when I was not living in the best conditions in life, when my parents separated but, you know, I went through it and then I, you know, I prospered. And, I, and while I was doing it, I was able to do my normal activities. I was just really down. But why don't you explain to the audience, you know, about depression, if there's different types and, you know, we'll go from there. Yeah, well, first of all, when most people think depression, they tie it in with sadness, anxiety and any other words that are synonymous with that. But for the sake of this, I really want to break down there's basically two different types of depression. There's clinical depression, and then you have conditional depression, which is more formally known in the medical world as situational disorder. And I wanna be very clear that I distinguish the two different types. So the first type, clinical depression, that is something that is more permanent, that is more persistent, something that perpetuates over a period of time versus uh, conditional depression or situational disorder, which is on a more, more temporary basis. So when you have, when you're diagnosed with something like clinical depression, that's something that, you know, it, it can come from a number of things. Like if, you know, a lot of times people want to know what the root is. Well, you know, it can be a, a combination of biological or psychological, um, it, 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 some kind of imbalance, a hormonal imbalance, there is, it, it could be genetic. There's a number of things that can attribute to that. And let me be very clear. I am not a doctor. This is just from me experiencing depression and kind of going through it and learning about it. But it's something that can really happen at any age. When I say clinical depression, you can be a child, you could be a young adult, you can be an adult, you can be um, an, a, you know, a senior citizen, elderly. Um, and clinical depression is a, a little bit more difficult to, to to treat because unlike conditional depression or situational situational disorder where you can determine the root of it, clinical depression is a little bit harder because it can be a number of things, like I just said, and it can last for a significant period of time. 
Um, it, you know, in addition to that, you know, some of the traits of being clinically depressed, not wanting to get out of bed, not feeling motivated to go and do anything from day to day, uh, wanting to isolate yourself, not wanting to engage or interact with others. So that's pretty much clinical depression. Uh, conditional depression or situational disorder is something that comes as a result of something that happens to you in your life. For example, you lose your mother suddenly in a car accident. Um, your, your your cousin, your brother, a loved one, a spouse, some kind of something tragically that happens to them that has a sudden impact on you. Or it can be you get fired from your job. Um, you you know you you encounter some kind of hardship. Um, or some kind of adversity or opposition that hits you, and then it drives you into a funk. That's what conditional depression is. And at least the, it, that's a little easier to treat because you know exactly what caused it, whatever it was that happened to you, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, whatever tragic event. Whereas with clinical depression, it can be a little bit more difficult because you don't know where it came from. So just to kind of start off with, those are the two main types of depressions. And Jason, forgive me, I forgot the question because I started talking about no, depressions. No, that, that was the question, you know, like, you know, tell us about, you know, uh, uh, depression as a whole. And, you know, obviously now you're telling us there's two different types of depression. And I can tell you, I believe you called it conditional uh, or situational. Uh, that's something that I've suffered several times throughout my life. And I think most of the world has experienced depression where, you know, I lost my grandma, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I've lost other family members. I've been kicked out of school, you know, where it's, it's, it's a cause. I knew the root of it, but it went away. Right. And I took care of it myself. I did a lot of, you know, self-work on myself, but now interesting, you're talking about the uh, clinical depression. Um, is this, Correct me if I'm wrong. This is what you suffered and have been living with, but you've controlled it and now taking life to the next best level. Is that correct? To a certain extent, yes. So um, about three years ago, uh, going on four years ago, because it was 2019, I was diagnosed with severe depression. And that was something, you know, I, I went to a doctor. They They diagnosed me with that. Then I went to a therapist. They diagnosed me with severe depression. And the way, you know, as far as where it came from, how I got it, I wouldn't say that I've been a depressed individual throughout my whole life. It was something that happened, I would say, maybe in my early 30s, where it kind of started. And it just kind of, and that's the thing with depression. It can kind of sit there dormant. And, and when I say dormant, it can kind of sit there um, and, you know, you you won't really you won't feel pain every day. Every day is not going to be heavy for you to try to get out of bed, but kind of like grief. And to anyone who's mourned the loss or someone who's who, or who has suffered an insurmountable amount of grief, it'll hit you in waves. So some days you'll be OK. Other days you're you'll, you'll want to just leave the earth. So that's the tricky thing with depression is it can come in waves like, you know, it's not necessarily you're depressed and just 24 seven every second of the day. You're just sad and you want to leave this earth. Now, for cer certain people, they could feel that because I want to be very clear. Everybody, you know, suffers different amounts of depression and the way that their body reacts to it is different from others. But um, for me, per se, it was something that kind of lay dormant. And then when something happens, it would wake it up. So Jason, for example, four years ago, I lost my girlfriend and that kind of woke up the depression bug inside of me and that kind of magnified it and made it difficult. And then from when that, you say, when you say loss, meaning she uh, she's not longer living with us or you guys broke up. Yes. Sorry. I, I should specify. We broke up. She's still living. OK, she's okay, still okay. doing great. Yeah. Understood. Understood. So just to recap, because I want you to continue. Basically, in your 30s, you started noticing, we'll call it the exorcist inside of you, right? In layman's terms, you know, something's not right, you know, and you're feeling down. But when you said waves, like all of a sudden something hits you and it it it, it, it kind of triggers you. It's like that trauma and it brings it alive even more. Right. Very Explain good word. 
Absolutely. And, and very good word using the trauma, because with trauma, as you know, there are triggers that that can that will make you relive a traumatic experience or that make it difficult for you. And I think that's the same thing with my depression. There were triggers that magnified it or amplified it that woke up the depression bug inside of me. Understood. Understood. So. So walk us walk us through the journey. How many months or how many years were you feeling this? But you, again, a lot of people live with depression. A lot of people live with anxiety. Everybody copes with it to a certain extent until, like you said, the wave hits so hard, you feel like you're drowning, right? It's just like, boom. How long did it take you after you're noticing, like, like what were the patterns that caused you to say, I need to go get help? Like, walk us through that very briefly. Absolutely. So, you know, I should say around the same time that my girlfriend and I broke up, I was also going through difficulty at my new job and I was suffering there. Uh, I, I didn't like what I did. I did not wake up every day happy to go to work. I, there were days I would drive to my job. I would sit in my car because I just had to mentally prepare myself for what I was about to walk into. So it was so difficult going to work every day. And then also, you know, I, I had never in my life experienced you know, um, animosity from colleagues and things of that sort. So I was just having a very difficult time at work. Uh, so my professional life, Jason, was suffering. And then my personal life was suffering because I just had a breakup with, you know, my girlfriend. So you combine the both of those. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult because at least with most people, if you're suffering in your professional life, you can find refuge um, or joy in your personal with life. your partner. Yeah. Or vice versa. So when you have both of those worlds crumbling down on you, it's like, okay, well, where do I go for refuge? Where do I go for happiness? Where do I go for joy? And to answer your question, Jason, that was when it started getting bad was when I, you know, personally, I was suffering and professionally, I was suffering. I didn't want to go to work. Um, I disliked my job. I was heartbroken because of the, the breakup. And I was in a space where it was just very difficult. And just to kind of take you guys through this, I would, you know, there were days I would get up and I felt like there were literally weights on my back. Like I felt like there were a hundred pound weights on my back, like just to get out of bed, took everything in my might to just roll out of bed to start my day, took everything. Wow. And for anybody who has, you know, suffered the bouts and just the extreme lows and valleys of depression definitely would be able to understand or empathize with that feeling to where you don't want to get up. And the reason why, Jason, and I'm going to get to this a little bit later because I want to be brief here, but it was hard for me to find purpose in those days where I was drowning and drowning in my sorrows, drowning, drowning in my depression. I could not think you know, most people say, well, you know, life is so great for me, you know, that I would literally, you would literally have to give me reasons to why I would want to leave this earth. Well, for me, Jason, it was the exact opposite. Like I wanted to leave the earth and I needed someone to give me reasons on why to stay on earth because I was suffering that bad. And the reason, the, the, the moment I knew I needed to get help, Jason, was I had a dream one night. And I had a dream, true story. I had a dream and I, you know, when you're dreaming, you're in another dimension or world, whatever's going on. Sure. And when I, and I was enjoying it. And when I woke up from the dream and woke up into my reality, it literally felt like I was, uh, go, uh, you know, like, for example, if you're having a nightmare and then you wake up, there's a sense of relief. Like, Oh my God, that was a nightmare. I'm good. It was the exact opposite effect. The dream was great. When I woke up from the dream and I was in my reality, I felt like my reality was a nightmare and I did not want to be in that reality. And I was like, I want to go back to dreaming. I want to go back to being sleep unconscious because that's where I was safe. Reality was not. And at that moment, Jason, I knew I needed help. Wow. 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 My, my hairs right now are sticking up, man. Um, whew. I know there's so much on the other side, the, the good stuff that you're going to tell us, but let me ask you this. Would you say to anybody that's watching or listening, because obviously everybody 
deals with things differently. Everybody has different experiences. It's like a paradox of different layers, right? Would you say that was the biggest thing? Because again, from the outside in, if you're a fish in a bowl and I'm looking at this fish, Kevin John is very well known, handsome on TV, six, seven days a week, right? On billboards. I mean, he's happy. Like, and I hate to compare you to whether it's Twitch from Ellen DeGeneres or uh, Robin Williams, right? You're seeing this put on a happy face, right? And then you're telling me this. I'm, my heart is breaking right now. Uh, and I'm trying to keep it together because I've known you for many years. What? What would you, I guess I'm, I'm lost for words here. I, I did not expect you to tell me that story about the nightmare and that you wanted to stay in it. It's better than your real life. Would you say that's really, really boiled down to it was like that unhappiness of that, of your work, your breakup. And you're like, was it pretty much like, what's the point of living? Did you just give up on yourself? And I say that because I have suffered and suffer from anxiety, which is very different, but very similar, Right. It's a disease, so to speak. And I have to mentally always remind myself of how awesome I am because I can see myself getting depression if I let the freaking world take over my brain. Right. So walk me through that. W would you say that was it? You just said, you know what? F the world, man. You know what? Work sucks. Girlfriend broke up and I don't want to live. Was that pretty much what it came down to? Was that the root? Well, I'm going to answer that, but I just want to back up to something that you said that was very important. And the reason why I want to emphasize something you just said, because there was so much uh, validity to it. The problem with most people who suffer from depression, you mentioned Twitch, you mentioned Robin Williams, two individuals on television all the time who seem like the happiest people of all time. There's people who can live with depression. And I think the part of the problem is, and this is, we don't have time to d dig deep into this, Jason. This is maybe another uh, podcast, another episode, but the fact that men are always told to suck it up as men, we're not taught to go into our deep emotions. We're not taught to express our emotions as men were taught to always tough it up, suck it up and do what you got to do. And I think that's what I did Do I mean, I was going through it. I was like, I'm a man. I got to tough it up. I can't talk. You know, I'm a man. I can't be depressed. I can't be sad. I can't, you know, I got to continue smiling and doing my job because as men, we're always taught to be tough. We're not taught to be in touch with our emotions or to share our emotions or express our emotions. We're taught to be tough. Yeah. So yeah. it was easy, Jason, for me to put on this disguise or, you know, this, cl I say clown because a clown is always smiling and, mm -hmm. you know, putting on this facade of happiness. And I was able to do that because, yeah, I mean, naturally I'm a charismatic person and I would much rather be charismatic and smiling versus be sad and, and, and depressed. So I did those kind of things, Jason, uh, as a way of toughing it up and not bringing people down to this level. Now to answer your question, Jason, I, it was the fact that I could not find any purpose for living. And, you know, it's one of the things like, you know, it's not like I have kids, you know, a lot of times, you know, someone's in depression, they're like, well, you know, I have mouths to feed that'll keep me alive or I have a spouse or I'm doing, you know, typically there's always something that somebody has to keep them living. Mm -hmm. Jason, it got so bad, literally so bad for me. I was like, well, you know, if I were to harm myself, I wouldn't want to do it selfishly to where I leave this earth and don't do anything good. So let me look up my blood type. Let me look up my organs to see if there's other people in the nation or e even overseas who can use my organs or can use my blood type or can use something. So at least therefore, somebody is making use of my body, my extremities, my you know, my things of that. So it got to the point where I actually started to research that and see, okay, well, maybe somebody can benefit from my, from, from me better than myself. And I don't think, you know, I don't think it's much is wanting to die. Like a lot of times people say, Oh, when you're depressed, you just want to die. I don't, 
I don't think you really want to die. Like I never really wanted to die. I just wanted to escape the pain. And the only way that you truly escape the pain is by obviously going and living, leaving this earth. So it, it was, it was bad. Um, but you know, you, you keep moving and you keep going. Absolutely. Well, Jason, you know, it, it's funny. I, I've been doing the talking here and I, I kind of commend you because I know that you were able to take on your depression as well. And you used your head in order to conquer anxiety and other things you were going through. So how exactly did you uh, get through that and how were you able to overcome those issues? I mean, I'll tell you really quick, and most of my audiences know this, but I've been depressed on and off throughout my whole life. The thing is, I only knew of one depression, right? And it wasn't until very recently, I actually had a therapy session a few weeks ago that I even understood what clinical depression was, which is what you have. And what I really suffered was from severe anxiety, right? And, you know, anxiety has been in me my whole life. I've been living with it. But what I discovered, because I mean, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I get the worst panic attacks, but I became friends with my anxiety. So when think of like a, a rope and a tug of war, you have anxiety monster, depression monster on one end, and then you got you. I, instead of fighting the monster, I let go of the rope. I became friends with it because anxiety, and I can't speak for clinical depression, but anxiety is never going to go away once you have it, right? Once you accept it, that's when you control it by letting go of the control. I have seen a psychiatrist in the past when my grandmother passed away and I had major, major anxiety. I was close to going not too long ago, and I'm a life, wellness, and relationship coach. It goes to show it could happen to the best of us. But I took my time, several months, learning, growing, and understanding what anxiety is. And anxiety, same thing with depression, is something neurological. And remember, our brains are meant to keep us safe. Think of it as an overprotective parent that always wants to keep you safe and unfortunately in fear. So when you're always constantly in fear, you think the worst. Oh my God, is this going to happen? Am I, are, are my hands going to shake? Am I going to do this? I'm going to do that. My anxiety gets so bad where I wouldn't want to be in public settings. I wouldn't want to go to a concert. I wouldn't want to do... Go, go to Fridays for a meal because I'm like thinking, are people watching, judging me? Paranoia, 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 right? And then finally, after working on myself, and I've been working on myself for many years, and I'm 41 going on 42, it's as of late more than ever. You can journal all you want. That helps. Meditate. That helps. But those are essentially band aids. They help when you feel it. But I tell this to anybody that's suffering from anxiety, and maybe this can correlate with depression. When you feel it, don't fight it. Acknowledge it, right? Look and look at it as a tennis court. Anxiety, depression, they're battling in your brain. Observe it. Don't become it because you are not your thoughts and your feelings. And I swear to you on God, on God and everything that that changed my life and my perspective. And I no longer let it control my life. So thank you for acknowledging me and thank you for letting me share that because it, it's not a fight. It's about accepting and living your life. Now, tell me, how did you take over your life? Because you told us all the bad stuff. You've made my my, ha my hair stick up on my on my forearms. You've made my heart palpitate. You went to get the help. What kind of help? What did they do for you and what, what, tell us how your life has changed and the three tips that the audience is dying to know. Absolutely. Well, first of all, Jason, I just commend you. Thanks for just explaining all of that. And I, I commend you taking that. I, I love the tug of war analogy and uh, tug of war. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 that's just incredible. I commend you, brother. So, yeah. So, you know, I got to a point, like, like I said, the first therapist that I went to, 
it was not, I, I didn't feel like I was just getting fed. I didn't feel that I was getting the help that I needed. And I tried to go to outside sources, like I said, you know, with my church and other things, and it just was not needed. So then what I ended up doing, and keep in mind too, throughout this whole thing, Jason, I'm working full time. I'm in school, um, you know, uh, you know, in grad school as well while doing, so I'm still having to go about these day-to-day activities where I have to be mentally sharp at work in grad school while I am suffering inside. So as a result of that, Jason, I was like, okay, I've tried to get this. I've tried to do this. I need help. So then I ended up going back to my doctor again. This was the same doctor who diagnosed me with severe depression. Mm -hmm. And I've always one of those people, Jason, I've always been afraid to get on medication. Was this, sorry, was this a regular doctor that you saw like a normal practicing doctor and and he diagnosed you with clinical depression? Yeah, family practice physician. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Go on. And he referred you to a. Yes. So when I went back to him in, you know, before I got on this, you know, before he, uh, we started talking about medication, Jason, I was apprehensive. And the reason I want to say this, because I know there's a lot of people out there who may be apprehensive or reluctant to get on medication. Cause I was one of those individuals because, Same. you know, I've never, I've never liked the idea of being dependent on something in order to function and just live. I hated that idea. I always believed in organic stuff, natural remedies. So I was never the medication person, but Jason, when I tell you, I got to a point where nothing was helping and I was still severe. I was like, okay, well, at this point, I don't care what I have to get on. I need some help. So then I did go back to my doctor. He then put me in touch with a a psychiatrist, someone who can actually prescribe medication. And um, to make a long story short, I was prescribed um, antidepressants. And um, sertraline is actually, sertraline is the name of the antidepressants. And I've been on them for about, gosh, I don't know, this was last summer. So maybe about nine months, you know, coming up on a year. And since I've been on them, to be honest, I, you know, I, I've been, I've, I've been fine. Like, you know, but I also think that part of the reason to me being fine is not all just because of the medication, but has been because of me reshaping my mind, taking this battle on head on and always knowing in my head, like the, the famous quote, this too shall pass. So with yes. that being said, I want to give you guys three tips to help you out when you're going through this, uh, whether you're going through depression, whether you're going through anxiety, whatever the mental disorder that you feel that you're going through, I really want to give you three tips that kind of help you out because these were three tips that helped me. Yeah. The first step I want to give you is no one can help you, but you, let me say that again. No one can help you, but you, I think we've all heard the quote before, we can't help you unless you help yourself. Yes, and, sir. You know, I think sometimes we think that there's this magic, magical person who's going to show up and sprinkle dust on us and everything's going to be okay. No, you have to be committed to, to wanting to help yourself. You yeah. have to be, and when I say get the, you know, no one can help you, but you, you need to get the help you need, whether that's see a therapist, whether that's go see a psychiatrist, whether that's um, get on medication, whether that's, um, I don't know, whatever you, some people do uh, yoga, whatever it is to release whatever it is that you're going through, you have to go through that. So that's tip number one. No but, one but, go ahead. But, but, but to add to that, obviously if someone has clinical depression, yoga alone is not going to solve their issues, right? Oh yeah. Like in other words, if they've tried to do yoga or go hiking or work out or whatever they did or they're doing, that alone is not going to solve it, right? You have to get to the root of it, which is why you need to see a psychiatrist, correct? And and go from there to see what they recommend, right? Absolutely. I think when getting to the root of it, you need to seek professional help. And, you know, whether that's seeing your doctor, a psychiatrist, a therapist, some kind of licensed professional in mental health or disorders, 
it is important for you to go and see. So therefore they can diagnose you. And then you could start, you could start taking the steps. Sorry, my light started falling over right here. So if you're wondering why, but, um, but yeah, so once you start, once you get that help, you could start taking the steps to recovery. And I know it's hard. And and that's what I'm saying with these tips. I know it's hard. And I'm, you know, I think the worst thing that you can ever tell someone who's going through depression is snap out of it or do this. Like, no, if it were that easy, I think anyone would do it. Hmm. So I say these with compassion because I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. Hmm. Um, but remember, no one can help you, but you. So that's tip number one. Tip number two. And Jason, you touched on this earlier with the tug of war. And you said, instead of fighting this whole thing, what are you going to do? Embrace it. So that is my tip number two. Become friends with depression. Accept it. Embrace it. And I know it sounds contrad- uh, you know, uh, counterproductive to say, well, let me be friends with this thing that's harming me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, but don't think of yourself. Don't, don't think of yourself as becoming friends with it. But Don't victimize yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Team up with it. Take it on. So when you embrace it. Because a lot of times when you're trying to fight it or run from it, you can be in denial or you can be saying, nah, I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to fight it or I don't really have that. No, that's fine. It's not going anywhere. It's kind of like if you're getting sick with a cold or something, you could sit there and say, well, you know, I'm a, you know, I don't really have a cold. I'm going to fight this. Or you could just take it on and say, you know what? I accept the fact that I'm sick and I'm going to take Sudafed or I'm going to take a decongestant or an antibiotic. And I'm going to be, and I'm going to be okay because you you just said it. The more you focus on anything, right? Especially something negative, depression, anxiety, the worse it gets. Cause you're feeding it energy. You're feeding the devil. Oh yes. He's going to run away. Good. That's what I want. I want him to be scared. Whereas what you're saying is embrace it, be friends with it. That's what I've been doing with anxiety. Every time it comes, it's like a weird little monster in the corner. I'm like, oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> How are you? Oh, there you are. No, you're not going to scare me. Okay, that was awesome. What's tip number three? <laughs> you know, it's funny. You made anxiety sound like it's a nice, friendly little person. Oh, hey, buddy. Give me a give me a, a, a oh, fist you know. <laughs> There you are, you little son of a gun. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're hilarious. All right. So tip number three. And this is very important. I'm going to say it in two ways. One, it is a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. Take it one day at a time. It's it's not going to, you're not going to snap your fingers and and snap out of it. It is a process, but I want to let you know this. It gets better every day. You may not be taking these gargantuous steps every day. You may not be taking these giant leaps every day. But as long as every day you keep moving forward and keep taking a step, you're going to get there. You're going to overcome it. You're going to feel better about yourself. And you will be able to rid yourself of this beast that we know is depression. So remember, it is not a sprint. And I think when I st- when I first was going through my depression, I was like, well, how come it's not getting better? It's been a day now. It should have got better. It's been two days, you know, and you you want everything just to, to snap out of it. But yeah. it's not. It takes time and Absolutely. go through the journey. Absolutely, man. So to, to wrap up and kind of for me to kind of summarize, because, wow, I'm so ec- ec- ecstatic and happy of, of you got the help. So you went from somebody because, mind you, I, I've known you for years. And like I said, always on happy face, et cetera, et cetera. You've expressed everything you went through. So you went, when you were in your critical depression, not getting out of bed, you were isolating yourself, correct me if I'm wrong, from friends, from family members. And that was for for a long period of time, right? Like how long would you say? I would say probably at its worst, I would say between six to nine months. Six to nine months. Got it. You went and got the help. How long did it take for the pills to kick in? And I'm assuming you started because I always see you on Facebook. You're either rock climbing, you're playing basketball, you're 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 biking. I'm assuming you incorporated all that within also taking the the prescription drugs. Like talk us about that so we can leave the audience like 
What do I look forward to? Like, how does how did Kevin get his life back, and why is life even better now? Well, I think it goes down, to, and this is something that I said earlier, and I want to reflect upon. You have to remind yourself that life is a gift, and life is to be lived. And everyone on this earth has a purpose in life, and it is your job to live and fulfill your purpose. And it was when you talked about the biking and the climbing and stuff like that, you make me sound like I'm this awesome adventurer, bad, you know, which I guess I kind of am. But uh, you're a badass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's funny. It's like when I was going through it, Jason, I think the problem and part of my issue with it, I never had really taken time to truly enjoy myself and to take me time. I was so focused pouring into a relationship or pouring into my career or pouring into my job. And when you pour into those things and then they crumble, you're like, oh, God, what do I have? And that's why I always say it's important to find joy and appreciation in little things in life that you enjoy doing. Because if you invest everything into a person or invest everything into a career or invest everything and, it, you know, it trembles up and it, you know, it eradicates, then what, what, what are you left with? What do you have? And that's why I had to take time to find little nuggets. And I would say this to anyone out there who is going through a difficult time. Try to find things that bring you joy. Try to find things that bring you peace, that bring you a sense of refuge, that give you a sense of purpose. Because I think if everyone in this world woke up with purpose and a joy of purpose, I don't think anyone would be depressed. I think, you know, you, the, the part of being depressed is not feeling like you have purpose and being sad about everything that's going on in life. So I say that to say that, you know, take it a day at a time. You don't have to figure it out overnight. Yeah, well, I didn't figure it out overnight. And that's amazing. Like, again, I'm super aesthetic, but I want to know, God forbid, knock on wood, I don't want to get, you know, or wish clinical depression on anybody. But say it happened to my mom, to my friend, to anybody. Once you started taking it, remember, you were at your severe breaking point. You get prescribed. Just tell us really quick. How long did it take for you to take this on a daily basis for you to get your life back and even better? You know, it. I would say, hmm, I would say probably about a year it took for me to, and, and that's gradually. And throughout that year, I, I want to make it very clear. It wasn't like throughout that whole year I was depressed. And then once the year came, I was happy. It was a gradual process. So certain days I'm like, okay, I can do this. You know, certain days get better, but gradually, and, and I want to say this too. I don't want to look at this as like, oh, I'm 100 percent healed now and I'm this perfect, happy person. No, I still I, you know, there's there's times I still, you know, feel down. There's times that I feel bad. It's just that now I know how to deal with it. Kind of like you said, Jason. Oh, that's you anxiety. Well, hello there, buddy. You know, you get to a point where you just know how to deal with it. So let me be very clear. I'm not at this perfect stage where, you know, I I, I have achieved, um, you know, the, the, the satisfaction of knowing I um, have conquered depression. Yes, I feel that I've been able to get through it, but it's it's still it's still a process and it's a day to day process. So to answer your question, Jason, I would say it took probably about a year until I was really fully able to get back on track and really feel a a sense of purpose in living and joy. Living and joy with purpose. I love it. I love it. And again, because I'm a fan, I see you again so active. Whether it's on screen, you know, hosting as a sportscaster, whether you're biking, hiking, basketball hoops, this that the other. You, you're thriving, my friend, and I cannot thank you enough for joining us today, giving the, us a background on your story, mental health, the difference on, on depression, and most importantly, never give up. Because when you live with purpose and you find your purpose, anything and everything is possible because life is beautiful. I love you, my friend. Thank you for uh, for sharing everything today. Absolutely. Thank me. Thank you for having me on this podcast, Jason. I appreciate what you're doing and just continue inspiring others the way that you are, man. I, I, I and actually, I just want to leave you with one other good thing. One other nugget as we hang up, as we conclude this, 
One of my favorite quotes of all time is the best way to cheer up yourself is to cheer on someone else. And I say that because in my heart, I love volunteering and I love giving back. And that's really what's helped me throughout my depression is making other people feel happy. So just going to leave you on that. Amen. That's what's up. Thank you so much. Everybody that's watching, watch, sorry, everybody that's watching or listening, do me a favor, drop your comments, drop a like, ask me and Kevin any questions. We can maybe take it for another part two on the subject or others. We're here to serve you. We're here to make you feel magnetic because you are awesome. Stay inspired. Get inspired. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Kevin. And uh, have the best day ever. Thank you, Jason. God bless you, brother. God bless. See you, bro. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer. And don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.